Here are the seven things I wish I knew in my first year in player development. My first year in player development is 2016, and this episode is to provide advice for many of you who are looking to get into the role. Some of you may be in your first year, but here are the seven things that I wish I knew uh, during my first year in player development. Number one, connect and create community. That was pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I wish I would have uh, created community. I did not know um, fully that there were other people doing the same thing that I was doing in the football team. I was just hyper focused on what I needed to do. But there were times where I was like, man, I wish there was someone who knew what I was doing. I wish there was someone I could reach out to who understands, uh, you know, the player development, how we're serving players, what's being asked. And I found out after my first year that there are people like that. So if you're going into the role, I advise you to create connect, excuse me, and create community. One of the best ways I did it was LinkedIn. I met a lot of people who have helped me uh, in many ways during my career through LinkedIn and different conferences. And if you, you know, you most likely if you're the division one level in this space uh, and I was in college, the other team has a director of player development. Send a message to them. Hey, I would love to meet you in pregame, chop it up with you, share numbers, whatever. But I wish I would have connected and created community. Number two, fail hard, fail now. <laughs> uh, this is something that when I look back at my career was so much opportunity that I left out there because I just wanted to play it safe. I was a high school coach for most of my career coming into this role. I was still trying to figure out if I wanted to be a coach or if I wanted to do this role. So I just kind of, well, let me just, let me just, you know, if they're asking for this, if all I need to be in a sense, I'll use this analogy. If I just need to be a C student, let me just be a C student. Let me not do anything outside of that. Um, and sometimes I regret that, but life is life. And so what I wish I would have known, I would have failed hard. I would have failed now. Why? Because that was my first year. That's when you get the most grace. That's when most people expect you to fail or for you to learn and do different things. And so I would have said, hey, maybe we should do this initiative. Nah, that, that's not good. Or, hey, we tried to go to the school that didn't work out. Or we should do this for the players. Or what if we did this? Or what if we had this speaker come in? The best time to fail hard and to fail now is your first year. So if you're in the role and you're kind of apprehensive and you, you, you feel like you want to move, but you're apprehensive, this is the best time to do it. This is the best time to do it. Just like your newcomers or if you're the professional level, your rookies, you have a grace. There's a grace area for them and you understand that they're going to learn. Hey, do the same thing. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Ed Jones II. I am the host of this podcast, The Player Development Pod. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am also the founder of Beyond the Field, where we create impactful player development professionals and programs. Uh, this episode, we're in the currently, this is episode six, I believe. Uh, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, of our hiring series. Right now, there's a lot, a lot of hiring that's going on in player development. So I wanted to create some episodes that just help those people. Some of you all listening to this are interviewing for positions and you're like, hey, I might be going into my first year, first year, excuse me. Some of you all are in the position in your first year. and You're like, man, what do I need to know? So this episode is there to help you. All right. Number three, keep tabs on the calendar. It's all cyclical. It just rotates around. And this came up uh, <laughs> when we change head coaches in my first year. So we had a head coach change in my first year. And I've, 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 yeah, I've done a podcast episode. You find it right here on that. And uh, the new head coach is like, hey, you know, he's asking me a question about spring ball. He's like with a student appreciation practice. Ed, what do we do? And I was like, "Ooh, yeah, uh, we do. And I, thankfully, someone had the notes and I was able to answer the coach's question a little later that day. But it just that moment reminded me like, man, why did I toss all that stuff? Every time somebody put something on my desk, why did I just toss it? I could have scanned it. I got a lot of scans. If you do not know how to scan on a copy machine, please do it. That is easy peasy. Put the date in the year. You could always go back to it. Um, scan, put stuff in the calendar. There's certain things that are going to continue to happen. There's always going to be if we go from January to December, there's always going to be a, a January winter break. There's always going to be newcomers moving in. There's always going to be winter conditioning. There's always going to be spring, then spring ball. Then coach is going to get on the road and recruit. Then players are going to leave in May. Then there's going to be a summer break. Then there's going to be summer school. Then there'll be a summer one session break. Then there's summer two. Then there's a summer two session break. Then there's fall camp. After fall camp, school starts. And then the season. And there's going to be a bye week. And so there's like these things that, that happen every single year. Like you're going to have mat drills in January. Like it's... There's so many things. And so keep tabs not only on the calendar, but those documents so you can every year you're making adjustments. OK, this is what didn't work here. This is how we got better, whatever it may be. But you need to keep that because it's all cyclical. It just rotates and it helps you 
in the role when you're discussing with coaches or administration hey i know we've done this every single year what if we did this to help it help make it better number four build more relationships on campus if you are in your first year in a role after 90 days after really just solidifying the name of your players understanding your players your staff and your role please 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 make campus relationships i found this out towards the end of my first year really during the football season when all these people who i've met when i was in the role in these meetings that i didn't you know keep their names or whatever when i saw them at games and i saw oh this is how oh you help the program i actually have a newsletter about this uh specific topic you can find it in the show notes and they're in there i put a lot of pictures i'm gonna start putting up more pictures of my time in a role but there's one picture where you see me with our orientation or our campus tour team. I met them when we took a campus tour and I graduated from University of Houston, but I wanted to take a campus tour just to make sure I knew all my stuff and didn't even realize that, hey, they can help us. So eventually someone on our staff, shout out to Derek Chang, was like, hey, let's get our orientation staff. Let's get the campus tour. So I went over there and built a relationship. We bought them to us and they actually helped us in recruiting because they could answer all the questions we didn't know. I remember after two home games, I was like, okay, I need to build more relationships on campus because these relationships benefit both of us. And so there's a lot of people on campus who can help you in the role. And I'm going to talk about it in the player development tips. So I don't want to give too much away, but when you build these relationships, you create sets of eyes and sets of people that can help you, you know, keep tabs, good or bad, on your players and understand what your program is doing and what's asked of your players. Number five, write the vision down and make it plain. Yep, got that one from the Bible, Habakkuk 2, 2. But this is something that I wish I would have done my first year. Like I said earlier, when I was in the role, I was apprehensive. I didn't want to, you know, didn't want to step on any eggs or break what they say, walking on eggshells. I didn't want to crack any eggshells. And so I just kind of didn't necessarily make much of a plan. I was like, hey, Ed, do this. Hey, do this. And then I remember sitting there, I was like, you know what? There were a couple outreaches about us getting in the community from boosters, alumni who were teachers. And so I created a program. We were like, all right, we're going to go. We're going to really focus on 10 mile radius of the city of Houston. And that's what we did. So we really dove in. We were doing some every single day. We came up, came up with the hashtag H town is our town, our town. Shout out to Grace Muscarello. And from there, we built shirts. I asked Coach Tom Herman, I said, hey, can we build these shirts? And we did. We built these shirts and we handed out, handed them out to players. So not only did we create an initiative um, by impacting those around us, we created a locker room initiative to where coaches, certain position groups like, OK, the D line had all these H town is our town shirts and they're walking around the building. And Coach Herman challenged some of our other coaches. Hey, I see a lot of these D linemen who have these H-Town is our town shirts, but where the O-linemen? Do they have theirs? You know, just different groups. And so it, came, it became something really, really cool. And what happened was there were boosters who started seeing, you know, us on social or LinkedIn. Shout out to Will Baggett, who taught me to post on LinkedIn. That changed my career. I got to interview Will Baggett. He, he did a lot for me, and he would be great for you all to listen to. But anyway... People start seeing what we're doing in the city. And so we start getting, uh, you know, requests to go a little further out than our 10 mile radius. But we always make sure made sure we took care of our 10 mile radius. And what this helped me was it helped me to see, oh, snap, like this role allows me to create a little bit. I'm not just it's not just, hey, think about this or, hey, do this. It's you can create and go. And that initiative towards the end of my first year helped prepare me to build beyond the field program which is a program i used at the university of houston university of kansas baylor university and is the program i use for content for episodes like this and for the courses that i teach and so if you're going into that first year and you know what you want to do you know what's important to you you know what's important to the staff the university just write down the vision and make it plain make it plain now, speaking of right now visions, you may say, well, where do I start? How do I get there? I have course information in the show notes where I have a self-paced course or a live cohort that's starting here hey, in about a week um, where I teach my students how to create a plan. We walk through it. What matters to you? I don't walk them through what I did. I use what I did in the Beyond the Field program as a reference point but I want it to be special to them. And our students have created incredible roles and it's great seeing a lot of them. 
uh, use those roles in the roles that they have right now or use that program, excuse me, that they created in the roles they have right now. Number six, create time with the head coach. You have to create time with your head coach. This is important. This is something that happened, but it wasn't because I was putting effort towards it. My first year, Coach Tom Herman would come in and check with me. He would bring me in. We'd have meetings probably every two weeks or monthly, and it was good. It was more me. Like I said, it was my first year. I'm taking notes, trying to figure out how to do my job. But looking back at that and looking back at that time, I wish I would have made some more intentional meetings to talk to him about player development and some of the plans and what he specifically wanted uh, in the role. Now, I did this later in my career, and the best um, two coaches that I met with the most were Coach Major Applewhite. Shout out to you, Coach Applewhite. You just got the head job at South Alabama. Really excited to see what you will do there. And Coach Les Miles. We met a lot. Um, Coach Miles, I had an open door to. Coach Applewhite, same same deal, open door. We met a lot of, a lot of times. And what happens is when you meet with the head coaches, there were a lot of stuff that they discussed that helped me in my role. So you want to create this time, I would say at least, at least once a week, at least once a week. And what I started doing even when I was at Baylor, I would ask uh, the head coach's assistant, hey, does he have five to 10 minutes on his schedule, right? But whatever it is, you want to get at least once a week, preferably twice. And if you can, three times a week. I've done that a couple of times. Uh, Whenever it's three times a week, <laughs> sometimes there's something going wrong, but it could be something going well as well. And so you want to create those opportunities. It's really good. It's really good to get time with the head coach because number one, the head coach understands what you're doing in player development. There's no, I heard this from so and so. This meeting, this is what we're doing. This is what we're going to do this week. And then number two, you're able to see or gauge if what you're doing is what they really want or if there are certain changes. And sometimes they just won't tell you. They got so much stuff going on in their desk that meet, set up a meeting with them, you get a chance to, hey, what do you think about this? You know what, I was gonna tell you these three things. That happened a lot when I worked with Coach Applewhite. He would give me additional things that he had on his desk. He had a lot to handle as head coaches do. And he'd be like, hey, Ed, uh, I got three or four things. Let me know what you think about them. And some of them were really, really good. I said, that's a really good idea. I didn't think about that. So. Yeah, make time with your head coach. And then number seven, the seventh thing I wish I knew in my first year in the role and my seventh piece of advice for you all who are getting ready to get in a role or interested in a role is create an end of the year review. So let me talk to you about an end of the year review. This happened at one of the universities I was at. It will remain nameless. Going into my second year there, I'm starting to realize, okay, I'm seeing what I'm doing. I'm having meetings with the AD, the senior associate AD, deputy AD. I'm starting to see that the role has allowed me to put a handprint on um, our program and what our players are doing. And I was like, you know what? This is about that time that we start talking about a raise. Now I may do an episode on how to go about that, but I just, this is my value to the program. I just want to be rightfully compensated. And so the person who was in administration was like, well, yeah, just tell me everything that you did. And I was like, tell you everything I did. Like, you know what I'm doing. So anyway, I went down, I went on my LinkedIn. Once again, post on LinkedIn. This helped me so much. Shout out to you again, Will Baggett. But I went down my LinkedIn from January all the way to December and I took everything that we did. And what happened was this document that I was like, I'm going to show them end up being a seven page document of everything that I did in the role. And if you want to uh, check it out, uh, let me know everything I did in a role. And so, and I actually talked about it here in this pot, in this question of the week, how do you assess your productivity of the program? And so when I looked at it, I was like, hey, this is really, really good. And what happened was I took this document and gave it back to them. And they were like, wow, this is really, really good. I'm like, you know, and I was about to get a raise in COVID. Mm, COVID messed that up. But anyway, it was an effective document to help, you know, show or illustrate what I did in the role. Now, I didn't do this my first year. I wish I would have, but I did it every year since then. And the other thing about this end of the year document that really helped me was I was able to use this in interviews. So when I went to the next university, I sent my end of the year uh, review documents to them. And they're like, oh, wow, because this document is a little more uh, intense than a resume. So you can put, flesh it out and they know that they're getting this huge review. Now, granted, going back, I probably would get some graphics, people to help me make it a two pager. Um, but they're getting to see all this stuff that you've done. And that's the seventh thing I wish I knew at the end of my first year. At the end of my first year, I was at the bowl game and, you know, I got memories and photos and different things like that. But you just forget because a, a year is a long time. You forget some of the things that you're able to do and some of a lot of things that the players, the impact that the players were able to have, not only on their team, the campus community and the city. And so 
that's something I wish I would have created. So if you're going into your first year or you're in your first year, these seven things that I wish I knew my first year in player development are pieces of advice for you. Number one, connect and create community. Number two, fail hard, fail now. Number three, keep tabs on the calendar because it's all cyclical. Number four, build more relationships on campus. Number five, write down the vision and make it plain. Number six, create time with your head coach. And number seven, create an end of the year review. Now, if any of those helped you, please like and subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already and share. You know, every person listening to this probably knows one person who is either in their first year or coming out of their first year. Um, Share with them. And if you finish your first year or you're a pro and there's things that you wish you knew your first year, let me know. Put it in the comments. We want to see. We want to get discussion. We want to help people. And so, yeah, make sure you let us know. All right, player development tip of the week is to create an external checklist. So I talked about it when I said the fourth uh, thing I wish I knew my first year was to build more relationships on campus. So this external checklist is a list of 35 people or more that I created after my time in the role. I so wish I had it when I was in the role. But I shared this list with my students who were in the course. Remember, the course information is in the show notes. And we talked about you know, the external checklist. Hey, make sure you have the external checklist. And actually, because of your support, I'm going to do an episode on the 10 people from this 35 that you need to know. So I'll give you a glimpse of this full list. But anyway, when you create this external checklist, these are people that uh, have touch points with your players in some way. They have touch points with your players. Once again, like I said earlier, they can provide eyes for you around campus, but you want to have a checklist Hey, here's the people that, you know, in this department or at this place or whatever it may be. The other reason why it's good is because if you have, when I was in a role, shout out to Lauren Hawkins, who was my assistant at the time at the University of Kansas. But there are a lot of times I wasn't in the office. And if I had this checklist in my desk, I say, hey, Lauren, hey, check the checklist real quick. Uh, I'm in this building. Who's the other person that works with this person in housing? Oh, it's so and so. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. And so you have this checklist or if somebody walks in and I say, hey, Lauren, I, you got to have a meeting. The person, they, their name's on a checklist. These are the three people or, hey, Lauren, this person on campus, can you find them? Can you find their email? Whatever. Right. Um, that checklist just helps you and helps anybody in your department. And honestly, anybody in your coaches staff know who's on the campus in these certain departments. Uh, external checklist is something that I'm a relationships person. So I remember names and faces and things like that. But having a checklist like this would have been huge huge especially you know during the holidays or after a big win and you want to write stuff to people say thank you so much for your support or whatever it may be uh it's just a great opportunity to just once again build relationships with people on campus and make it stronger because these people will help you in the role this is a cheat code to getting help in the role when you're the only person in the role there are a lot of external people on campus that want to help you so make a checklist stick to the checklist check your people and build relationships on campus well that's all for today once again those are the seven things i wish i knew my first year my first year was a blast and if you want to check out some pictures from my first year go click in the show notes to the player development newsletter it will show you a lot of pictures i was supposed to get like seven i think i downloaded 28 so i was having memories and you know what if you want me to share more pictures and content um like that videos from my time in a row and explain what we were doing in programming let me know in the show notes This is what I want you to put. Show me the pictures. Y'all have a good one. And as always, go out and create generational impact. Do not wait. Create that generational impact today. And check out this video here about my first day in the player development role. Hey, y'all. It was a wild one. Have a great one.